I'm Nathan, and welcome to Stories with a Twang. Today's episode is called Peekaboo Part 2 by Bailey S. Singer. Peekaboo Part 1 was last week's episode. If you have yet to listen, go back and do so, and I'll be waiting for you here when you get back. That thing had entered my home and forced those words shivering into my brain on a wave of putrid breath. It tittered maniacally, and my skin practically crawled off my body as I felt its moist, hot tongue caress my cheek. I whimpered and prayed to a god I never believed in as I prepared myself for the worst. I waited for its teeth to sink into my neck for its jagged, ragged fingernails to rake the eyes from my skull. I waited, and waited, and waited. I sat waiting until the nascent vestiges of dawn broke across my tightly closed eyelids. They fluttered open, and my breath caught as I prepared to once again come face to face with the entity I had named Peekaboo. And I was alone. Blessedly alone. Even so, I sat there till almost midday expecting it to spring out from behind the curtain in homage to its namesake with a banshee shriek as it rushed me in a final horrible prank. But it didn't. Nothing happened. I sat and pushed the limits of how long a person could hold their water before wetting themselves. I eventually decided to brave the bathroom and nothing happened. The release of relieving myself was nothing compared to the relief I felt from realizing I might finally be rid of my demonic voyeur. I pondered on how I had just given in. I was at my wit's end and desperate and just wanted to cease the endless invasion of my privacy. I thought the only way to end this nightmare was to just give in and give it what it wanted. I began to assume it only manifested itself to impart a lesson I should never forget like a twisted version of the Ghosts of Christmas Past. But you know what they say about making assumptions, right? Weak need and stumbling, I eventually made my way to the kitchen to begin embracing what was once my safe, predictable morning routine. Semi-sweet coffee and a slice of rye. I almost smiled as I leaned against the counter and followed the motions of familiarity. Lost in thought, eyes unseeing, I reached into the cupboard to grab the canister of earthly brown ground goodness. Instead, my hand came down on something wet and hot. I recoiled with a shriek, remembering the feeling of Peekaboo's tongue sliding across my jawline. I threw the cupboard doors wide and saw my coffee, Hawaiian medium roast, sitting as I expected. I'm losing it. The irony wasn't lost on me that that's what I had thought when Peekaboo first began appearing. I desperately clung to the possibility that I was going mad, as that was more preferable to the alternative. I mechanically prepared my morning repast, all pleasure lost. I didn't feel as if I could handle returning to work. I told them that I wasn't in any fit state to return, but I was seeking existence to ensure I get back on my feet. My boss understood. I have the best boss. I spent the rest of the day trying to pull the pieces of my routine together. My morning go-to was spoiled by a fear-fueled delusion. I was hell-bent on getting my life back. I tidied up the collective refuge I let stagnate during my moments of turmoil. I made myself dinner, a lovely roast chicken with garlic and lemon. I showered and felt every drop cascade down my skin while the tension left my body. I had my life back. I had accepted the consequences of my entitled antics and finally felt close to my old self. I held my face up to the stream, eyes closed. I relished the tranquility and reached to turn the tap and dug through a mass of tangled greasy hair. I started back and lost my footing. I snatched at the towel bar and ripped half of it off the wall, barely saving myself from at least a broken coccyx. I didn't see anything. Nothing made its nefarious appearance. Once as happenstance, twice as coincidence. I was shaken. I insisted on the possibility of some type of PTSD manifestation. 
I still tried to cling to the idea of freedom and stability. I was free, damn it. I was rid of that sadistic stalker. I dried, dressed, I brushed my teeth. For the first time in an eternity, I collapsed in my bed without fear. I was physically, emotionally, and spiritually exhausted. I felt as if I could hibernate till winter, shower again, then hibernate till spring. I sighed with pleasure as I settled in. The incident in the shower had unsettled me, true, but at that moment I just didn't care. For the first time in what I felt was forever, I didn't have some perverted demon creature staring at me as I tried to sleep. I snuggled in, sighing. I was asleep before I finished exhaling. I started awake, checking the alarm clock, 3.03 a.m. I felt uncomfortable. I had awoken with such urgency. Why did I do that? I felt that something was wrong. I tried to shrug it off by pandering to the washroom to answer the call of nature. I sat half asleep in the pale green LED glow of my wall light. It is not a nightlight. I could barely keep my eyes open. Finishing up, I zombily returned to bed. Settling in, I tossed and turned. I flipped onto my opposite side, smacking my lips. I felt a rustling so soft it barely registered, but it was enough to open my eyes. And there it was. So close to my face, our noses were almost touching. Peekaboo's wild, bloodshot eyes were staring into mine with such nihilistic glee. It was breathing heavily, its breath foul and damp, long, greasy black hair splayed around its head and face, its tongue fanatically licking its lips in a wet, sloppy fanaticism, yellow mucus covering and dripping and pooling on my pillowcase. It giggled so softly. It reached up, caressed my face, its skin rough and dry like a snake's, and leaned in as if for a kiss. I snapped. I shrieked. I smacked the hand as if it were venomous, frantically scrambling and kicking and scrabbling away, but I couldn't. I was cocooned in my blankets. They held fast like a vice, following the will of this creature's twisted desire. It pressed both hands to my cheeks, leaned in close. Oh, you are just so beautiful. It croaked and crooned into my ear. We are gonna have so much fun. My heart was hammering so hard I felt it in my toes. I was hyperventilating. It wanted me. It wanted to invade more than my privacy. Its eyes wide as saucers, unblinking tiny pupils quivering with anticipation. It moaned in my ear and I shrieked in response and squeezed my eyes so tight it felt they fused shut. Leave me alone! I screeched, clenching my whole body. And it was gone, like a puff of smoke. I would have believed it was a night terror if not for the pool of yellow mucus on my pillow and the tiny, intentionally slow titter I heard come from the vent of my bed. I'm guessing Peekaboo followed the same rules as a vampire. It never ever got so intimate in invading my space before until I let it into my home. I thought the worst thing it could do to me was watching, observing, voyeuring. But I was so, so wrong. That was just the beginning. I've resigned myself to my fate even though I have no clue as to why this is happening to me. I realize now that I'm just its plaything, its toy, its pet. I'm writing this as a sort of farewell, for even now as I type this I can feel its breath in my ear as it presses itself against me, moaning in rapture. All right, everyone, that's it for this week's story. I would like to give a giant thank you to this week's author, Bailey S. Singer, for another incredible story. If you have any stories you would like me to read on the podcast, you can send them on over to storieswiththetwang at gmail.com. The show is on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Stories with a Twang Podcast. 
It would mean an awful lot if you could rate and review the show wherever you listen, and don't forget to share with your friends and family as well. It could really help the show grow. I hope you all have a wonderful week, and until next time, remember that a little twang goes a long way.